Topping today's news, the Minister of Education defends the government's school repair program. A Grand Bahama man that went missing after a fishing trip found dead. The latest on the transition to democracy in Haiti as gang activity flares up and Prime Minister Davis on bed rest for a few days. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News, and it is a pleasure to have you join us. Minister of Education Glennis Hannah Martin is responding to complaints from the Bahamas Union of Teachers regarding untimely school building repairs. Last month, the Bahamas Union of Teachers President Belinda Wilson criticized the government for their timeline of repairs, stating that the union has suggested for repairs to take place throughout the school year rather than at the end of summer. However, the education minister says the government is currently redeveloping their school plan as they work on challenging timelines. For example, if you go to Government High right now, we're in a third phase of redevelopment. We're doing it every summer. And you will find that that is actually becoming a new school. T.A. Thompson, about two years ago, that was a three-story complex that we did during the summer period. And so what they're doing is not simple school repairs in every instance. It's not simply changing a doorknob. I heard some comment about being shoddy. I was very um, disappointed. Our, our contractors are skilled individuals, and they're doing, they're, they're doing fine work across the board. And I want to thank them because they're, they're not just engaged in a commercial enterprise. They understand what this, what this project means to learning and national development, and they are giving their all, and they're, they're working day and night to achieve the, the timeline. The minister says the government is putting ample effort behind their plan to make sure that students are able to go into safe, decent environments when school reopens in a matter of weeks. Hannah Martin also touching on plans for the recent fire at the demolished Harbor Island All-Age School that just happened this past weekend. We are completing a school block, there are five classroom blocks, which will help us deal with the classroom space that has been lost as a result of the demolition um, of a very um, a condemned building, which was very controversial, which students have been in for far too long. That has been um, demolished, and the five classroom block is being completed. The students will be transferred to that block, and we're also um, engaging in additional repairs of the remaining um, standing blocks that were there historically to, ins and to ensure an improved environment. Public schools are expected to reopen for students on September 2nd. Police informing the media this morning shortly before 8 a.m. that the search for an adult male who went missing near Gold Rock Creek on Tuesday has come to an unfortunate end. The man's body was found in the area of Freetown near the old missile base. Police on Grand Bahama initially reported that two male relatives went on a fishing expedition along the coastline of Gold Rock Creek. Both men separated around 7 a.m. and had planned to return at the separation point at 9.30 a.m. However, as the tide rose and water conditions worsened, only one male returned to the separation point. The missing male was found unresponsive Police investigations continue into that matter. Residents on Harbor Island protested on Monday over poor electricity and water supplies to that island. On Tuesday, the Water and Sewage Corporation said it noticed the very vocal protests by residents and they have provided an update on how it is addressing the water woes on Brallon. In a written statement, the company explained that aging, very fragile public infrastructure systems, challenges with the private water production company on Eleuthera and the rapid increase in the demand for water supply on Harbor Island is the reason for much of the water problems there. They say while some works have been completed, substantial works are now in progress and further works are being defined in order to improve the supply of water. They say some parts of Eleuthera have experienced some incremental improvements already and further improvements will continue across the mainland and on Harbor Island. The statement said the Water and Sewage Corporation is working closely with its sister utility, 
BPL, Bahamas Power and Light, to ensure reliable power supply to its water systems, which are highly dependent on consistent power supply. Intensive works are in progress to increase the water storage across the island of Eleuthera, replacing old leaking water storage tanks with new increased capacity systems. And finally, in this segment, CARICOM's Eminent Persons Group is in Haiti to help advance progress in the move towards democracy and free and fair elections there. The group comprises former Prime Ministers Perry Christie, former Prime Minister Kenny Anthony of St. Lucia, and the former Prime Minister Bruce Golding of Jamaica. Mr. Christie, Mr. Christie rather, recently had surgery, so he did not travel to Haiti, but is contributing to the work remotely. The group was welcomed by officials from the Bahamas Embassy in Haiti. Minister of Foreign Affairs Fred Mitchell, while in Fox Hill yesterday, shared the following on the Bahamas' involvement. Right now, uh, the EPG is in uh, Port-au-Prince. Uh, the uh, EPG is supported by the Royal Bahamas Defense Force and their security needs. Our Director General and a Foreign Service Officer is supporting what the EPG is doing. They report to me that things go are going relatively smoothly and are on the right track. And so Bahamas will continue to do uh, what it can to support that. The CARICOM eminent group of persons will remain in Haiti until August 16th to meet with various stakeholders, including the acting Prime Minister Gary Carneal, President of the Transitional Council Edgar LeBlanc Jr., organizations forming the National Conference Mechanism, and civil society representatives. Meanwhile, it appears the road ahead will be bumpy. When, the, when they first arrived, the first contingent of 200 Kenyan elite police officers arriving in Haiti, residents were relieved that there was a sign of hope for a stable environment. But some six weeks later, reports out of Haiti say that the Kenyan forces have come under fire from gangs who do not want to give up control of certain sections of the city. The Royal Bahamas Defense Force is providing security in the waters surrounding Haiti at this time. You're listening to JCN News. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.